Hello, my name is Lisa Shea, and this is part of my series on origami folding, origami videos, Japanese history, Japanese arts, and so on. Today we're going to talk about folding a Japanese goldfish. I'm using a dark paper because people have commented that they find it easier to see a dark paper with a light colored background to be able to see the difference between the two sides. But let me know if you think a different color paper will work well and I will work with different colored papers to help you out. I also have different angles done of these videos so that you can see some from the top, some from the sides, and so on. And you can figure out which angle works best for you. And if you have suggestions on other angles you'd like me to try, please let me know and I'm happy to work on that. Alright, so today we're going to work on a Japanese goldfish and I will alert you <laughs> that there are scissors involved. I know that some people feel that no origami should ever involve scissors and involve any tearing of the paper. And you could use your fingers to tear the paper, it's not that you have to use scissors. But some people feel that the paper should never be altered in any way. And if that's the case, then you probably don't want to do an origami goldfish because this involves a little bit of tearing of the paper. But if you are okay with making two tiny little cuts to the paper in order to make the origami goldfish, then we are all set to continue. So you start with a square of paper. Traditional origami paper is just about six inches square. I would recommend starting with larger paper if you are just getting started because it's a little easier to make the folds. But if what you have is six inches, then that is fine. If you don't have actual origami paper, that's fine. Just make sure that it's reasonably thin so that it folds well and that it can hold a crease because most of what we're doing here is making creases to the paper and if your paper does not crease that'll make it a little trickier. So start with your paper with the non-colored side up if you have a colored side and a not colored side. If all your paper is colored then that makes it a little easier. It doesn't matter which side is up and which side is down. We're going to start by folding one point of the paper up to the opposite side. So we're going to fold this in half so that those two points come together. When they come together, what we're going to do is drag our finger from that point down to the crease side, and that makes a nice sharp crease. And then if we drag our finger off to one side, and then off to the other side, that helps to solidify the crease. Alright, so now we have triangles. We've turned our square into triangles. So now we're going to fold this point up to meet up at that point. So we're going to fold this around until that point reaches that center point. And so that this side line matches that side line. And if I drag my finger down again towards about the center of this opposite line, then I can slide my finger left and right and create a crease. So now those sides match. The points match, and then this comes down the center of the shape. So similarly, I'm going to bring this point around to reach up to that center point to match right up with that other one we just folded. So we're going to fold this around until the point gets up to where we need it to be, until this side line matches the underlying line. And again, if I drag my finger out to there, slide it one way, Slide it the other way, and we've got a square. We've got a square with little floppy pieces. All right. A lot of this shape is similar to the kabuki helmet. We start, in essence, with a kabuki helmet process, and then we just do a little differently at the end. So now we've got these two loose points. We're going to take one of these loose points and bring it up to match up with that top point. So we're bringing it up, we bring it to match that top point, and now we are going to crease and get that to be a nice sharp crease. And then the same thing here, we're going to take this point down here and bring it up to meet that top point, so we're going to fold this up get that until we, it's where we want it. And once it's where we want it, then we're going to drag our finger down to make the crease. Slide it one way, slide it the other way, and now we've got the nice sharp creases. 
All right, so now we've got a piece that has these two triangle parts up here, a flat part down here, and the back is completely flat because we haven't done anything at all to the back. All right, so now we're going to form the fins of the fish. So see how there's a line going across the middle of this? We are going to want to fold these top areas so that the top is parallel to this. And here we can show you the example here since they are related to each other. So see how those are similar to each other? We're going to be folding this top wing so it comes across and is parallel to this line. We want that part parallel to that line so that they're both in the same left to right orientation. So if we leave that there for reference, although I know that's sort of a puffing up because we need to get that to crease a little better by sitting it under a book, but for now we'll do that. <laughs> so we're going to take this top point and we're going to rotate it so that this top face more. So that top face is parallel to this face. If you do this on a go board or something like that, then it helps you to have the lines or just a piece of paper that has lines drawn on it. It doesn't really matter that it's perfect. The idea is just in general to get it so that this line is parallel to that line and so that it rotates around the center point. So we're going to do the same thing here so you get to see it happen again. So we are going to rotate around that center point so that this top here, that top line, is parallel to that line there. So see how those two lines there end up being parallel to that area there, and now you've got the two fins. Alright, so next we're going to bring this bottom part up, and again it's very similar to the Kabuki helmet. We're going to bring this point up about halfway into this area. And it doesn't need to be precise. This is more about how pointy or not pointy you want it to be. But you bring it about halfway up into this area and crease the bottom line. And now we're going to fold over this area here so that we reach that bottom of the crease that we had before. So there's a bottom of the crease. We're going to fold up that area so that it matches that bottom crease. All right, so in essence, we have just done the helmet again, because this is starting from the same base. So see how that's the same there? And you can see how in this one I did the second line a little higher. This one's a little lower. That is all fine. That does not matter. You're just making a fish shape, so you can make it as pointy or not pointy as you want. All right, if we were doing the helmet, we would now stuff this point inside because the helmet has a lining on it. So on the helmet we've got a lining and we just stuff this lucid piece of paper inside it to get rid of the lining and stick it in. But for a fish we're going to do something different. For the fish we're going to turn this upside down. So now we've got the back side showing and we're going to fold this point here up to match that point there. So we're just going to fold this right in half and crease it down. So now this back piece is up along the back side, and you can see the front looks like that. So it sort of looks like the helmet here, but on the helmet the back side shows the paper, and on the fish the back side currently is showing the back side of the paper, the white side. Alright, so this is where the scissors come in. So first off, we are going to open up this middle part, so let's say the inside of the helmet, if this was a helmet and stick our finger in. And what we're going to do, and this is sort of hard to see in three dimensions, but imagine if you're trying to do this from a book. We used to have to try to figure this out from looking at books and diagrams with arrows, so it's much easier to see this in three dimensions. All right, so we've got a helmet, we'll call it, with an inside. And we are going to fold it so that the two points of the helmet come to meet together. And this is going to fold everything around so it forms a square. All right, so we, right now we've got a triangle. And as we bring these two points together to meet, the rest of the side will bulge out and get to be in a square shape. So this is part of where having thin paper helps and having crisp paper helps so that it folds in these kinds of shapes. So as we bring these two points together, 
the two sides bulge out and get to be a square, we'll call it a diamond. And now if you gently press along the edges, then you help to emphasize that square slash diamond shape. Right, so now you should have a square, and you can see how it's related to the helmet. It still has those fins, but now we have squished the fins down so that they are now laying alongside the fish. So this is the other fin here. All right, so now we have mostly a fish shape, but this tail is attached to the body and it can't unfold because all of the sides are attached. And this is where we need scissors. So again, if you do not like the idea of cutting paper, then maybe look away. <laughs> but this is part of this process. So one side of this fishtail is solid. This is a solid piece up on the top. On the bottom side, there are two separate wings of the fish and the paper of the tail is attached on either side there. So what we're going to do for the part where there's two separate wings is we're going to take the scissors and we're going to cut along this fold line just about halfway. Maybe a little more than halfway. Alright, so I have cut down the sides of the fold where there are the two pieces, the left piece and the right piece. And now, if we take this part, this overlying tail part, and what we're going to do is flip it around. So we take it and we create a crease in this area where we just made the cut. So we're creating a brand new crease, folding it around so that the colored part, if we have colored and white paper, gets to be shown. And if you don't like how much of the tail is showing, then you can cut a little more. So let's say I looked at this and said, all right, the tail is a little too short. I want to make the tail longer. Now if we cut a little further up each side, now we can fold a little more because a little more paper is free. All right, so what we did is we cut the paper free on this bottom area here where it was connected on one side and it was connected on the other side. So we cut those pieces free so that the paper could fold around. This top part we did not cut and that is still just a regular old fold. So now we've got a fish that has a little front area, a little shadowed under area, and then these fins and the tail, which we cut free on the bottom, was able to fold around and to create the tail area. Now the fish is still a little bulgy. See how it flops out? Because it is not quite recovered from the original shape it was in. So this would be something that you'd want to put under a book or something heavy for a couple hours to be able to flatten it down so that it stayed in the fish shape. But once you get it to stay flat, then you've got this to stay in the fish shape. You could also try to get it to stand up, but it tends to be top heavy. So if I let go, <laughs> it's going to fall over because of the way that it is oriented. So you would have to tape down its tail to be able to hold it to stay in place or, you know, prop something up underneath the front of it. So like I have this little rabbit sculpture. So if we stuck the little rabbit sculpture under it, it would stand up. So if you're intending to have these as table decorations or something, you would either need to tape down its tail or put something under its nose to keep it from falling over. Because this is just heavier with all its layers than this back part, which only has one layer. All right, so. Oops. Put that down. 
Alright, so once you put it under something flat for a little while, then it will be able to stay flat and you will end up with having a fish. We can tape it down from there just to show you what it would look like. Just put a little piece of tape there. And a little piece of tape there. Alright, so ask if you have any questions about folding the fish. Let me know if you'd like to see this from different angles or with different colors of paper. And let me know what other shapes I should work on. So thank you and have a wonderful day.